I've eaten a lot of sandwiches in my life, and if there's one that's ever made me speechless, this is it. Okay, so today we're making a very specific torta sandwich. Obviously, we're making the bread. So I wanna point out that this can be applied to many different kinds of meats. You don't have to do the birria, you can do whatever you want, but I would recommend that you start here if you wanna goddamn drop your draw, well, maybe not drop your drawls, but this is a meal where you sit down, you eat, and you're, you're not getting up afterwards due to the immense amount of, well, calories. We could just do plain birria on here, but we're gonna wrap our birria in a cheese crust, and that is what makes this sandwich special. This isn't a diet show, so with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? As I've said, this is no ordinary torta, let alone a sandwich. We have our homemade telera, big dub, but what you need to pay attention to is this cheese crust encased ultra juicy birria. So let us begin. Now contrary to how we usually start with homemade breads, I'd actually recommend that you start with your birria. It's mostly the same as my original birria recipe, link in the description, but because I'm a sweetie pie, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown anyway. I do wanna notate that this whole sandwich recipe, including the birria, will make enough for six to eight people. First begin with a seven to 10 quart pot, add enough oil to coat the bottom, heat that over medium high, until it's as hot as me in short shorts, then sear one pound or 450 grams of boneless chuck rows, three big short ribs, and one and a half pounds or 675 grams of oxtail. Once all that's beautifully browned, remove from the pot and add one chopped yellow onion and eight cloves of rough chopped garlic. Saute your, why does it smell so good in here, starter pack, season to taste with salt, and once softened, add one tablespoon or 12 grams of tomato paste. Continue to cook till the tomato paste starts to caramelize on the bottom of the pan, or well, pot in this case. Add your sachet consisting of one tablespoon or eight grams of black peppercorns, one tablespoon or seven grams of coriander seeds, six bay leaves, and one cinnamon stick wrapped and tied in cheesecloth so nothing falls out because that would literally defeat the entire purpose of this tea bag. That sachet goes into the pot followed by two and a half quarts or roughly two and a half liters of rich beef stock and five sprigs of fresh oregano. Stir that and set to medium high, bring to a boil, then reduce the heat to low to a light simmer, add all your beef back in a mix of five ancho chilies and five guajillo chilies which have both been DC. Instead of a lid, I like to add a cartouche, but if you don't want to be squilliam fancy son like me, then you can use a lid. Now just simmer that for one hour, remove all your chilies, place into a blender along with about a pint or 450 milliliters of cooking liquid, blend that on high until smooth as possible, add back to your pot, stir lightly to avoid tearing the meat up, bring back to a simmer on low heat, and allow that to simmer and reduce for one and a half more hours, and it's done. Remove your ridiculously tender beef, discard all the bones, then using gloves or two forks, shred the meat as fine as possible, and yes, please, dear God, include the fat. So mix it all together together with the meat to create what I'd call the epitome of moist. I don't care if you don't like the word, okay? It's descriptive. Now ladle in a splash of your broth to your beef, season it to taste with salt, and you're done. Now if you want to be efficient with your time, you can also make your telera bread while your meat is simmering, considering you have three hours to do so. But of course, either can be made a full day of header time if needed. Start with one and a half cups or 375 grams of water at 95 Fahrenheit. Whisk in one tablespoon or 14 grams of instant yeast till dissolved. Let that sit for five minutes. Then whisk in one tablespoon or 17 grams of honey. Separately in a medium-sized bowl, whisk together four and a half cups or 675 grams of all-purpose flour with one and a half teaspoons or 10 grams of fine sea salt. Add your yeasty to your stand mixer, set the mixing speed to medium low, and add your flour one large spoonful at a time till all of it's added. Then once it begins to form a dough, add one and a half tablespoons or 23 grams of lard or bacon grease if you want to be ultra naughty. And just let that mix for five minutes or until you get a beautifully smooth dough. Give that a couple more kneads by hand, roll that into a light ball, and place in a grease bowl, cover with plastic wrap, name your little man, and rise for one hour or till doubled. Now, of course, essentially caress your dough. Then punch it down to thoroughly degas it, dump it onto a lightly floured work surface, and cut into six even pieces. Obviously, you can go for eight if you want more medium-sized tortas, but just stop playing and make them big. It's what everyone wants. Form those pieces into light balls and let them rest for five minutes. Then roll each ball into a rough cylinder about seven inches in length, tapering the ends. Then using a grease straw, press two indentations lengthwise, equally spaced apart into the dough. This does two things. It flattens and widens the dough, but it also creates that classic tilitra shape. Now place your finished dough onto a baking sheet lined with greased parchment paper and repeat with the rest of your dough. You should be able to fit these on two baking sheets. I tried to fit all six on one and granted it's possible, but it would be a lot better if it was three by three. Cover that with an inverted baking sheet, then wrapped in plastic wrap or, you know, just greased plastic wrap, and let that proof at room temp for 25 minutes or till puffed and nearly double. Spray with water and pop into an oven that's been preheated to 400 Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes or until you pull out beautifully smooth golden brown Tilera breads. Now these look rather simple, but the interior is softer than a cloud and the exterior is airy and crisp, truly the perfect bread for this application. Let those cool to room temp and we're almost at assembly. 
assembly time. Of course, we need to have a yum yum sauce. Super simple. Come on, three quarters of a cup or 185 grams of mayo, a quarter cup or 60 grams of sour cream, two teaspoons or five grams of chipotle powder, a quarter teaspoon or one gram of cumin powder, two tablespoons or 30 grams of Cholula hot sauce, and three cloves of garlic. Grate it. Season that it tastes with salt and pepper. Whisk together, and that is your yum. Before assembly, make sure you got your mise en place. Two tomatoes, sliced, somewhat thin. One sweet onion, finely diced. One head of iceberg lettuce, very thinly sliced. And two perfectly ripe avocados, sliced into half inch pieces. Hit with a little bit of regular or smoked flaky salt. And finished with lime juice. Now for the secret in the moment you've been waiting for. Instead of just tossing a heaping stack of your meat on your bread, we're gonna wrap it in a crispy Oaxaca cheese crust. You'll need at least four cups of shredded Oaxaca cheese, but extra is always good. Heat a dry 12 inch nonstick pan over medium heat. Sprinkle in just enough cheese to coat the bottom of the pan. Let that melt and then continue to cook, fluctuating the heat up and down as needed until the underside of the cheese is beautifully browned and crisp about two to four minutes. And sprinkle a nice line of your diced sweet onion, a light sprinkling of fresh chopped cilantro, and then layer in enough beef for one sandwich, roughly in the same shape of your Tilera bread. Then carefully wrap your cheese around the meat to fully encase it, sort of like a burrito. And that's it. It should hold together quite well if you did it correctly. And you have a cheese crusted birria in all of its shiny, cheesy glory. Now get your Tilera, cut it in half, brush the cut sides with your birria beef fat, Toast it in a pan, till crisp and nice. Spread on a generous amount of your yum yum sauce on both sides of the bread. Then on the bottom slice, add your avocado to your heart's desire. Some slices of tomatoes, which of course were salted. Don't try to add me here, all right? A nice stack of your refreshing shreddis. And finally, in betwixt those worlds of flavor, is your baton of cheese encased perfection. Now carefully crown your king, get a sharp knife, slice it in half, and wow. You have a sandwich that isn't just world class, but one bite is for sure to send you out of the planet and into a another dimension of flavor that I can't sit idling by without you having a taste. So grab a bowl of consomme, topped with onion and fresh chopped cilantro, dunk your sandwich with tears welling up in your eyes, and enjoy a core memory-causing bite. Now let's taste test this to see if we may have created the greatest sandwich of all time. I don't even think this is a high claim to say that this is one of the greatest sandwiches that we've ever made in the history of really anything. I have immense love and adoration, admiration, Adoration for the torta. A beautiful creation that anything can be put in, really, but if there's anything that it should be, it should be cheese crust wrapped meat. <laughs> a dunk. Yeah. Holy sh. This is ridiculous. Funny enough, it's actually not too rich. My concern was this is gonna be too rich, gonna be too fatty. This is perfectly balanced. The acidity, the spice, the saltiness, the fatty beef oozy, the juicy, juicy squirt squirt is so unbelievably present. This is the greatest sandwich we've ever made on this channel, period, end of story. And I mean that to the fullest extent of the law. I think we should get, have someone come in here and eat this. Kevin wants to eat it. Kevin, do you like naughty, 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 naughty? Oh, so naughty sandwiches. <laughs> That's what I order and most of the time they look at me weird. Kevin was on the channel in the humble beginnings and uh, we saw some stuff in his own home and somehow that led to him working here what a success story so now it's all brought you to this very moment to eat this sandwich oh, wow what a bite oh if I can have the rest of this sandwich I will quit my job and come work for you <laughs> you heard it here one of the greatest things I've ever heard in my life yes you, can't, you. you actually can't have the rest of the sandwich. I can? That. I lifted a few inches off the ground when I was chewing it, and then as I swallowed it, I like came back down to the earth. So it's sort of like each bite, it's, it's a sussy. This is insane. Yeah, it's dumb. Long story short, food should not taste that good. This is the greatest sandwich you'll ever make in your entire life, and I know I see that kind of stuff all the time, but this really will change your life. And you'll probably have to change your pants afterwards. You wanna know what else has big mounds of Papa's hot meat? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made our most perfect, most beautiful, most sensuous torta sandwich. And I feel like we just keep one-upping ourselves because we recently did the French dip, which if you haven't seen, link is in the description. Quick plug right there. This is even better than that. Obviously, there's a lot of wait time with the cooking and waiting for it to rise. If you combine waiting for the bread to rise and waiting for the meat to braise, it's really not that bad, okay? Stop complaining and just take the goddamn time it takes. To make something utterly delicious and special. Now, with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. My voice is kind of strained from yelling all week at people who don't do things right.